بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد اي الله حبت في الله this book is is incredibly important and this is a reminder for myself and my brothers and sisters to take heed especially because it deals with a lot of the fitna that we deal with and it shows us how the salaf of this ummah and how the great imams of ahl sunnah in the past a lot of issues that we could th- believe are contemporary and the t- contemporary fitna in fact it has a basis uh you know that these things happened in the past and that the ulama of ahl sunnah that they came with the ilaj they came with the medicine they came with the remedy to deal with a lot of these uh issues that we have as a community Imam Ibn Rajab hafizahullah ta'ala he said uh, rahmatullah alayhi he said the difference between adv- in in his treatise the difference between advising and condemning he said furthermore there is no difference between criticizing narrators of one of the hadith scholars hafiz and distinguishing whose reports are to be accepted from those whose reports are not and between clarifying the mistake of one who has erred with regard to understanding the meanings of the book and the sunna interpreted some aspect of it incorrectly and who has uh, adhered to something false this clarifying was done so that this individual would not be followed in that which he erred the scholars have also unanimous, unanimously agreed upon the permissibility of doing this clarification so here imam ibn rajab is show is uh highlighting for us that this criticizing and clarifying mistakes of even great imams great imams of ahl sunna is something that's agreed upon by the imams of ahl sunna it's agreed upon uh by the ulama of this religion of islam that if someone errs that you have to clarify their error so it's not out of spite and it's not out of hatred and that regardless of whether they are one of the hafiz one of the great imams and the memorizers of hadith and those narrators of hadith and those uh, imams of ahl hadith regardless of whether it's them and regardless of whether it's uh one of the lay per, uh laymen or regardless of whether it's someone from ahl bid'ah it still has to be clarified the mistakes we cannot follow anyone in mistakes this is what we should gain from this and there are other immense uh fawaid and we're going to get to that uh fawaid as mentioned by our ulama Imam Ibn Rajab then said this is why we find that the books they authored concerning the various sciences of the religion such as tafsir explanation of hadith fiqh the differences of opinions among amongst the scholars and so on are filled with arguments and refutations of the statements of those who voiced weak opinions from the scholars <coughs> of the past and present from the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in the tabi'in rahimahum allah and those after them letting us know habita fillah that yes the sahaba to rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in that they had issues in fiqh and so forth in which they differed over and which some had weaker opinions and others had stronger opinions for various reasons and we're not here to get in to the to to the reasons perhaps that sahabi radiyallahu ta'ala an uh did not hear that hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and you'll find these kind of narrations in bukhari and muslim that will uh verify for you and one example i'll give you an example of uh the ijtihad of a sahabi uh one is the hadith of abi huraira radiyallahu ta'ala an where he had he in the hadith where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said uh inna ummati yad'una yawm al-qiyamah yawm al-qiyamah uh it's a hadith where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam i've forgotten the the hadith the exact text where he said that my ummah will be 
<clears throat> will be raised uh, Yom Al-Qiyamah Fi Athar Al-Wudu, you know, in, in accordance with their, uh, to the extent of their wudu. فَمَنَ اسْتَطَعَ مِنْكُمْ أَنْ يُطِيلَ غَرَّتُهُ فَلْيَفْعَلُ كَمَا قَالَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ So whoever amongst you is able to extend this trace uh, of wudu, then he should do so. Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه, he understood this and from his ijtihad he was practicing this as is mentioned in uh, uh, perhaps Bukhari and Muslim, but in in one of Sahihain, he, he he mentions that uh, uh, Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala that he used to make the wudu up to his uh, to his his shoulders, but he didn't do this outward so that the people could could see. But this was from his ijtihad of his understanding. Of that hadith, and he was uh, and he's rewarded for that ijtihad, even though he was mistaken that this is not correct. So we cannot make wudu following Abu Huraira radiallahu great Imam of the Sunnah, Sahabi Jalil, the the most uh, a hadith, uh, you know, a narrator, uh, the most. Uh, you know, narrations of hadith coming from Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an, that we cannot follow him in this ijtihad. So this shows us that we don't, if we don't follow uh, this sahabi jaleel radiallahu ta'ala an, the, uh, you know, Amir al-Mu'mineen hadith you know, this great <laughs> imam and narrator of hadith, sahabi, then how is it that we could follow even our imams, even our scholars, if it was an issue that they were mistaken in. So they will be rewarded in that. And if they were correct in their ijtihad, they will get two rewards. But you and I will not be rewarded for following someone in a mistake. So this shows us the importance of understanding that as the Prophet uh, ﷺ said, Kulu ibn Adam wa that all the children of Adam, they make uh, mistakes or sins. And the best of those who sin are those who repent. And the many other evidences which illustrate this very important principle that we don't follow anyone in mistakes and that if someone makes a mistake, their mistake must be clarified. So that way the rest of the ummah doesn't carry that. It requires clarification. And as Imam Ibn Rajab said, the scholars have also unanimously agreed upon the permissibility of doing this clarification. And so then he said, Rahmatul Alay, not one of the people of knowledge abandoned doing this clarification, nor would he claim in his refutation to disparage, dispraise, or defame the individual who's saying he was refuting, unless the author he was refuting was from those whose speech consisted of wickedness and who displayed vile manners when expressing himself. In this circumstances, uh, in this circumstance, his wickedness and vileness were forsaken apart from the original state of refuting and opposing him. And this refutation was based upon sound arguments and stable proofs. The reason for all of this was due to the unanimous agreement of the scholars of this religion that the truth which Allah sent his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with must be made known and so that all of the religion can be purely for Allah alone and so that his word can be the highest. This is absolutely imperative that we understand this and we begin to practice this uh, in, in understanding that when you re refute someone and when you clarify someone's mistake, it's not to belittle them and it is not in fact belittling them. But instead, it is raising up the religion. So their status, uh, with regard to, you know, they have a high status, that is not to be considered when it comes to defending the religion, if it's something that's going to be widespread. And at the same time, as the imam mentioned, and as the imams of Ahl-Sunnah mentioned in the past and up until now, that 
when regards to refuting Ahl Sunnah and great Imams of Ahl Sunnah, that you maintain their honor and status. So it's not that you're belittling them and destroying their honor and trying to, uh, you know, belittle them in the eyes of the people, but rather you clarify their mistake and maintain their honor and maintain their status. Great Imam so and so, he made him his opinion was weak, and this was based upon maybe a weak, uh, weak evidence that he had, and he didn't either realize the authenticity of that hadith or he b believed that hadith was authentic when in fact the evidence shows otherwise and so forth. So maintain the honor while at the same time refuting the mistake. This is imperative and it's an adab that we have to learn how to have and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.